Christmas is a officially recognized holiday celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. Over the span of two millennia, it has morphed into a globally observed holiday that combines shades of Christianity and secular customs into its own distinct celebration. Today, we're going to talk about the history of Christmas and how that history affected African Americans. And if this is the type of story that you enjoy, you can find more stories like this at OneMyHistory.com. If you like to support the channel, you can do so much. Buy me coffee, Patreon page, and the description below. Give us five stars on Apple Podcasts and support the YouTube channel. But without further ado, let's get started. The historical roots can be traced back to before Christianity, marked by a common midwinter festivals that are celebrated throughout Europe. Characteristic elements of festival periods that included the beautification of homes with greenery and indulgence of lavish feasts and the practice of gift giving. The people of ancient Rome would celebrate the winter solstice with a pagan holiday entitled Saturnalia, a celebration honoring the agricultural god Saturn. This holiday also included wreaths, candles, feasting, gift giving. After Christianity engulfed much of Europe, the specific date of Jesus' birth remained a very contentious matter up for debate. Theologian and biblical scholar Ian Paul speculated that this event might have transpired in September, and he draws this from calculations made based on the birth of John the Baptist. Nonetheless, Pope Julius I of the 4th century declared that the observation of Jesus' birthday would take place on December 25th, a decree which notably coincides with pre-existing midwinter festivities. Some of the traditions that we associate with Christmas, like adorning a Christmas tree and Christmas carols, can be traced back to 16th century Germany. While the tale of Santa Claus emerged independently, stemming from Dutch Santa Claus and St. Nicholas, who was renowned for his generosity. He is commonly portrayed with a darker complexion. St. Nicholas was most likely of Middle Eastern descent and specifically from modern day Turkey. The acceptance of Christmas did not occur instantaneously. During the 17th century, England Puritans banned Christmas, as did several other regions within the American colonies on the basis that it was too hedonistic and worldly. It was only during the 19th century that a form of Christmas that we recognize today began to materialize with nations establishing the tradition of gift giving, family centric celebrations and the growing commercial and promotion of activities centered around Christmas. The mainstream acceptance of Christmas in the United States can be accredited to the works of Washington Irving and Charles Dickens. Dickens illustrated in his work A Christmas Carol this idealistic version of Christmas celebrations celebrated by family togetherness, benevolence, and empathy. But for people of African American descent who lived under the burden of slavery, the significance of Christmas was twofold. First, it was a brief period of relative ease and relaxation for the demands of slavery, even if it was just for a few days. Secondly, this was also a period of deep spiritual contemplation and expression, largely influenced by Christianity delivered to them by both missionaries and their enslavers. In the 1830s, the southern slaveholding states like Alabama, Louisiana, and Arkansas became the first regions in the country to declare Christmas a state holiday. Throughout the antebellum era, Christmas traditions such as exchanging gifts and Christmas carols and decorated their homes ingrained themselves strongly into American culture. For the enslaved workforce, Christmas generally granted the longest holiday of the year, also granted them the privilege of family visits or marriages. It was common for enslaved people to receive gifts from their enslavers and indulge on festival foods that weren't otherwise been accessible throughout the year. Christmas season also offered the enslaved a temporary hiatus from their extremely laborious work schedules. Many of them got a day off, allowing them to participate in activities that they normally couldn't do the rest of the parts of the year, such as visiting friends, neighboring plantations, hunting, fishing, or simply congregating socially. Abolitionist Frederick Douglass would state, this time was regarded as our own by the grace of our masses, and we therefore used and abused it nearly as we please. Some enslaved people would use this relaxing period to ensure their freedom. In 1848, Ellen and William Crabb, an enslaved couple from Macon, Georgia, masterfully used the travel passes awarded to them by their enslavers to orchestrate their escape by train and steamer to Philadelphia. 
Harriet Tubman helped her brothers to escape at Christmas. The enslavers intended to sell them after Christmas, but they were delayed by the holiday. The brothers were expected to spend the day with their elderly mother, but met Tubman in secret, and she helped them travel north, gaining a head start on their enslavers who did not discover their disappearance until the end of the holiday. Christmas didn't only represent a physical freedom, but spiritual freedom with the hope for better days ahead. The main character in Martha Griffith Brown, Autobiography of a Female Slave, found hope in the story of Jesus Christ that symbolized Christmas for her. She, even as she rejected her master's interpretation of Christmas, equating it to the strengthened bonds of servitude, she found solace in the promise of freedom in the life of Jesus Christ. During these celebrations, elements of African roots emerged with the newly introduced Christian narratives around Christmas. They adapted Christmas customs and the symbols of the European enslavers to reflect their own interpretation as they melded it with their own cultural practices. For instance, in Wilmington, North Carolina, enslaved people celebrated John Cunderling, also known as John Canoe or John Canoe in which they adorned themselves with fantastical costumes and moved about expressing joy through singing, dancing, and rhythmic performances. The practice of gift-giving among enslavers during Christmas embodied the continued reinforcement of their domination over enslaved people. The enslaved people lavished in economic disparity that impeded their ability to purchase gifts. So it's common for slave owners during the holiday season to present their enslaved workers with commodities such as clothes and money that was usually denied to them throughout the year. Texas historian Elizabeth Silverthorne cites an example of an enslaver who gifted his enslaved family $25. Furthermore, the children were typically provided with candy filled sacks or pennies. Stephen Nessenbaum narrates an incident where a white overseer found the act of Christmas gift giving would be more efficient than exercising control over enslaved individuals by resorting to physical violence. The overseer would state that I've killed 28 head of beef for people's Christmas dinner. That said, I can do more with this than I can with all the hides of cattle that were made into lashes. When it came to reciprocal gifts, enslaved people were rarely able to provide gifts to their enslavers. But there were some rare instances. For example, a report on a plantation in South Carolina where some enslaved houseworkers offered their owners some eggs wrapped in a handkerchief. Despite this, these instances were exceedingly rare. And in general, the trend of gift giving during the holidays was a one sided street. After emancipation, moving into the Reconstruction period during the late 1860s ushered in freedom for enslaved Africans, and it was substantially altered the landscape of Christmas celebrations among African-Americans in the Southern United States. For the first time, African-Americans were able to impugn the Christmas holiday with whatever traditions they saw fit. However, their socioeconomic plight and rampant racial discrimination continued to make Christmas largely a period of introspection and resilience to these newly freed African-Americans. From the shadows of slavery and segregation, Christmas traditions transformed to incorporate values of spirituality, community, equality, and ancestral remembrance. Gospel choirs sang spiritual hymns. Jazz performances came a mainstay of Black Christmas celebrations, providing a unique soundtrack to the festivities. Culinary traditions served a distinct identifier for African-American Christmas with dishes such as collard greens, black eyed peas, cornbread, combined with Southern and African influences. During the period of the Great Migration, where African Americans moved in mass to the industrialized North, had a considerable impact on Christmas customs. Infused with their newfound urban prosperity, Black Christmas celebrations expanded to include material gifts, decorations. This served to demonstrate African Americans' upward mobility, but also displayed the unique cultural characteristics of the African-American community. During this time period, we also saw the birth of the Black Santa Claus, originating from a desire of African-Americans to have representation during this festival season. Black Santa emerged as a cultural emblem among the Black community. It was not merely a mythological figure, but it represented a breaking of social or racial barriers, a symbol of hope and inclusiveness and diversity. For Black children, Black Santa is an affirmation to their own identity and a meaning and place within American society. Meanwhile, 
the black church continued to remain pivotal in shaping black Christmas, providing a spiritual solace and a community strength amid social prejudice. Linked to these customs were events like candle services, church plays, singing spirituals and hymns, which came to define the uniqueness of black Christmas. Even today, Pew Research Center studies suggest that around 80 percent of African-Americans are likely to attend church service either on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day. During the Civil Rights Movement, this brought a new hope for equal rights and social acceptance. And Christmas during this period took a more profound meaning for black folks. The holiday period was often utilized as a platform to rally support and highlight racial injustice. One prominent instance was a Christmas boycott in 1959, where black leaders were successful in organizing a citywide boycott of white owned businesses to protest racial injustice. The boycott hit the merchants at their busiest time of the year and thereby severely hindering their profits. Activists believed that this kind of economic impact could push the conversation of desegregation forward and they were proven right in other cities across the country. Today, Christmas represents a time of family, love, and reflection for the African-American community. As Maya Angelou notes, the ache for home lives in all of us. It's a safe place where we can go, where we are not questioned. Christmas seems to symbolically embrace this quote and offer a season where black folks can just be themselves and connect with their roots and their family. Today's black Christmas have been influenced by a unique mix of religious devotion, cultural pride, and family bonds. I personally recall Christmases filled with sermons and emphasizing love, hope, and faith, and Christmas Eve service filled with prayer, song, and community love, and the narrative of Jesus' birth also clearly interwoven with current issues and symbolically reminding us that despite present adversities, the hope for redemption and change always exists. Thank you. I'm your host, Country Boy. This has been Black Christmas. If you like stories like this, you can find more stories like this at OneMikeHistory.com. Give us five stars on Apple Podcasts. And I would like to thank all my Patreon and membership subscribers. I love all of you guys. Thank you for your continued support. Peace.